Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, you're going to learn how to set up a webhook handler for Stripe webhooks in a remix application using one of those remix actions. If you haven't already seen our video all about getting set up with Remix and Stripe for accepting a one-time payment, head over and take a look at that video. We'll link down in the description. You should also see a pop-up uh, over here somewhere. And in this video, we're gonna talk about just building out that webhook handler. So I've got the, the dev server running here. What we're gonna do is pop open our application here, go to routes and add webhooks.tsx. Now inside of here, what we want to do is create const action, and that is going to be a function that is going to receive the request, and then we can do some things with a request that's coming in. Recall that a webhook is sort of like a telephone where you're going to receive a notification when something happens. So in this case, when a payment intent is created or succeeds, or really any other event happens on your Stripe account, you can action that and you can be notified about that and uh, automate some things directly inside of this remix action. So for now, we'll just console.log the request.json. So we'll just log out the JSON and that returns a promise. So we need to await that and we'll also return um, just some empty objects here down at the bottom. Now, in order to test webhooks, oftentimes you need some way to connect that third party application to your locally running server. Maybe you're using ngrok, you might be tunneling, you could somehow put this application on the internet so you can receive those webhook notifications. In today's episode, we're gonna use the Stripe CLI. So I'm gonna say Stripe listen forward to localhost 3000 slash webhooks. And that will form a direct connection between my Stripe account and my locally running server. If you haven't already uh, watched the Stripe CLI episode, head over and take a look at that one also. All right, so you also notice that we have a signing secret that was rendered out here. We're gonna come back and talk about how to verify those uh, webhook signatures in just a minute. But now we have this action set up and it's running at this webhooks endpoint. If we go through our process for buying a book, as soon as we click on buy a book, a brand new payment intent is created as part of rendering that page. And we see all of this event data that came in directly in the server logs because recall that we're console logging the JSON for that event, right? Okay, so now this all of this data comes in. We see that the type of the event was payment intent created. We can see that the status of the payment intent is currently requires payment method. That's because we actually haven't filled in the form yet. But if we were to go through the process of filling in this form, we would see that we're gonna get another event type that is gonna be sent to us. So if we click pay, then as that payment is being confirmed, we're gonna have a couple other events fire, charge succeeded, and uh, a few other things that are gonna fire. So here we have this charge succeeded, we're gonna see another um, a payment intent succeeded event. So these are all the event types that we might want to um, use to automate fulfillment of our, you know, uh, the goods and services that we're gonna sell, or maybe provision access to some digital, uh, some digital thing that we're selling. So let's go back over to our application here because right now it's not actually secure, right? Because this is just receiving any old JSON request uh, that is posted to our webhook endpoint. So for instance, if we said curl dash X post to localhost uh, 3000 slash webhook, at this point, anyone could just create some webhook data, my webhook data and post it to my endpoint, blah. Okay, so if I send that, uh, oh, webhooks, plural. So if I send that, I got back this empty object and also in the server log, you'll see that we logged out the JSON that was sent to us. So instead of trusting any old post request that comes in, what we wanna do is verify those webhook signing secrets. And we can do that using this, um, I'm sorry, we wanna verify those signatures on the webhook payload. So we're gonna use this webhook signing secret as our, um, our signing secret. Just drop that in here. In practice, you might wanna store this in an environment variable, which you could do. Um, we're also going to grab off the signature header from the request. So we're gonna say this is the signature is gonna be request.headers.get stripe signature. And we're also gonna create an object called an event that we're gonna set as part of uh, this next part of the process. So we're gonna say that the event is equal to stripe.webhooks.construct event. Now this takes in three different arguments. We need to pass in the payload. That's gonna be the raw request body. And we'll talk about how to get access to that. 
We also need to pass in that webhook sign or the webhook signature that was in the payload. So that's going to be that header that includes the signature. So this construct event method might raise an exception. So we want to wrap this whole thing in a try uh, catch block that's going to give us back an error if it does fail. And if it does fail, what we want to do is we want to return back a response with a 400 saying, you know, this failed because we weren't able to verify the, the signing secret. So we're going to say return new response. And the response is going to have like our message inside of it. If you want, you can get fancy and put your own custom messages in there. We can say the status in this case is 400. And that should be good for rendering back. Now, otherwise, if we did uh, if we did successfully receive an event, then we want to sort of switch on the event type. So we can say like if the event dot type is payment intent dot succeeded, then what we want to do is console dot log money bags or something. <laughs> payment success. All right, so we will log that out to the console if that is successful, and that's where you might you know, print a shipping label or send an email or, you know, start some order process on your end. Okay. So we're going to take out that console log. And the next thing we need to talk about is this payload. Where does this payload come from? Now, in practice, if we were just going to await that request.json, we're going to get back a JavaScript object. We're going to get back an object that has been parsed. So the, the payload body that came in as a string of data that looked like JSON was parsed into a JSON object. But when we're confirming those signatures match, we don't want a JSON object. Instead, what we want is the raw payload. We need that raw string payload. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that the payload is the raw text of the request. So request.text gives us back the raw text of the request. That returns a promise that we can await. And then we're going to say that payload is that value. So here we're passing in that raw text value that is the, the, the text of the request. So let's just clear out our, our server log here for just a second. Now, in order also in order for us to use Stripe here successfully, we need to import Stripe from Stripe. That's the Stripe node client library. And we're going to say const Stripe is new Stripe process.n.stripe secret key. And we should be ready to test this out. So let's go back to localhost 3000 and walk through our payment flow one more time. And we're going to keep an eye on these server logs. So we're going to buy a book. That received a post request to the webhook endpoint, and we got a 200. We're no longer logging out the entire payload of, um, of the event object, but we can see that we did get a 200. The other thing you can check, too, is the server logs for the events that are firing on your account. So down here, we're seeing that payment intents are being created, and those are all being passed as webhook post notifications to our endpoint here. So now we can go through the flow, enter in some payment details, and click on Pay. And that should successfully end up in a payment intent that succeeded event, which we can see here, payment success is logged out to the console. All right, that's it. This is a webhook handler for Stripe webhooks in a Remix application. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.